Hello everyone, there are just some cards that I think are incredibly annoying. Cards that just get under my skin. And I thought about just making like a top 10, another top 10 of the most hated cards in the Commander format, but it's always subjective, so I might as well just call it the top 5 cards that I absolutely cannot stand in the Commander format. These videos tend to do well, and I used to make videos about the ban list, but I don't really care about a ban list, it's really just encouraging cards that I think are good for the format and discouraging ones that I think are bad. And I'm not going to go through the typical ritual with a lot of these subjective videos where I explain to you the whole concept of having an opinion and why it's going to be different than yours. I'm going to explain exactly why these cards just infuriate me. <laughs> so enjoy, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Really helps the channel. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to respond to you if you have any questions. So number five, the first card here is probably one I think people are going to disagree with, but it's Alish Norn Grand Cenobite. Yes, out of all of the Praetors, I really cannot stand when Elish Norn hits the field. It's more of a personal thing for me. I tend to play a lot of token decks, and yes, I also play a bunch of removal, but it always seems to never really amount to much of anything. Because removal can only really stop an Elish Norn once it's out there. An Elish Norn played at the right time can pretty much just derail your whole game. So while some people consider it the weakest of the Praetors, or one of the weakest ones, I think it's probably the most annoying. Shuldred used to be a big deal, but there's so many ways of dealing with her, and she's rather slow compared to what else is powerful in the format. Jenga Taxius and Vornclex I don't really think end games quite the same way. And I know there are a lot of people that think those two Praetors are more powerful than Elish Norn, but believe me when I tell you, late game. You give all your creatures plus two plus two and pretty much eliminate all chump blockers in your way. Yeah, kiss your life goodbye. <laughs> so number four, we have another thing that just irritates me. It really gets under my skin. It's scape shift. You could also have just any mass land retrieval spell that results in you getting a ton of land ETBs and getting you pretty much just any land that you need because that's the power of scape shift. You're getting all these land ETBs, and landfall is one of the most powerful strategies, if not the most powerful strategy in Commander. At least when we're talking about just everyday casual Commander. And Scape Shift is really just that card that sort of encapsulates everything that I don't like about landfall. Not only are you capable of having big returns than really any other deck, you just have the one card big plays. And while that's not uncommon in Commander, it just seems like every other card is a big play in a landfall deck. And when you're capable of sacrificing, oh, I don't know, 10 lands and getting another 10 in a deck where it's also easy to get them back from your graveyard, it's just something I never recommend. I'm not the biggest fan of landfall. There are some landfall strategies I can get behind, but I almost never recommend like any easy to win with landfall decks because they're just not fun. You're just putting yourself way ahead of where everyone else is. And scape shift is just, God, it's, it's way too good. And then number three is Yarok the Desecrated. Now, because I don't like a card, it doesn't mean that I don't agree with you when I say it's one of the better cards in Sultai. It is. It's, in my opinion, the best card if we're talking about Sultai colors. It's just, when I look for a well-designed commander, I look for something that has subtlety. It can be powerful, but I want something that isn't going to just scream to everyone at the table that I'm going to combo. I'm going to take advantage of enter the battlefield, untap my land abilities, or really just any kind of overpowered ETB that can combo, which when you're getting double the ETBs, that's so easy to do. And for the longest time, I've talked about this in my top 10 Sultai video. People complained about Deadeye Navigator because they thought it was so abusable. Like it's the one card that can combo with everything. So then we get a commander option in 2019 that pretty much just says, hey, you get double your ETB, so everything that was broken with Deadeye Navigator, it's easier to break with the commander. <laughs> so... All those two card combos that people complained about with Deadeye, you don't even have to work that hard to break in this kind of deck. I'm never going to say a card here is bad, but it's not a good design. It's uh, incredibly lazy when you think about there's no kind of condition for the ETB, there's nothing like that whatsoever. It's just if you can break it, here's your commander to break it with. So number two we have... <laughs> Believe it or not, there are two more cards here that I think are even worse than Yarok. 
cards I really don't like. Number two is Teferi's Protection. I know there are just one card answers to really any problem. If you need to get rid of a creature, you have removal. If you need to counter a spell, you have counter spells. Teferi's Protection is essentially just one card you play where nobody can do anything to you. Nobody can stop you. Nobody can try to get back into the game. Hey, we need a board wipe. Well, I guess you wasted your board wipe. It's just cheap to me. I've never been a fan of this. If you want to play a fog, play a fog. But making it so that you're pretty much untouchable. You know, you got that star in Mario. So you're just going... That's just annoying. I will say that it does exile itself, so it's not the card I hate the most. It's not like you can just keep getting it back. But still, you only really need to play it once. And I just, I don't like these one card answers to literally everything. I know people don't like Cyclonic Rift, but that's Blue's only way of dealing with a board full of creatures. Without just absolutely bouncing everything that they own to their hand as well. And then number one we have, now I know, everything here is controversial, everything here is going to be a conversation. But uh, Time Stretch, or just any kind of extra turn spell, but especially the kind of spells that you see played in decks like Narset. And just any deck where the goal is to get to an extra turn, and then get to more extra turns, and then get to more extra turns, and then eventually win. This is the number one thing that I hate the most in Commander. And you'll notice, like, nothing here is super competitive. Like, nothing here is something you're going to see in competitive EDH. I guess maybe Teferi's Protection, but even then, the point I'm trying to make here is that extra turn spells just completely ruin the game. It's like you're having a one card win, but your whole deck is meant to be. Oh, let me take another 10 minutes to have another turn to figure out if I'm going to get another turn. This is worse than literally any kind of one card win, any sort of one card answer to any problem, anything you can think of. These time stretch cards, these time warp, take an extra turn after this one. Oh, take another one. I think you all know I have a very high tolerance for pain in commander. You'll notice I haven't complained about some other cards that other people have complained about, like Dead Eye Navigator, Winter Orb, Stasis, anything like that, because I know the difference between stacks and cards that are just poorly designed. And I've never liked extra turn spells. I've never liked them. Never thought they were a good idea. It's just the least fun way that you can win, and it's the least fun way that you can be beaten. Because nobody wants to sit there and guess whether or not you're going to get another three extra turns. They're just going to immediately scoop. And for those of us who like to play out every situation, who like to see if, well, who knows, you might make a mistake. We're left there waiting forever for you to eventually get to a win con. And if you don't arrive at a win con, well, you're just going to say I can take another five extra turns. Can you understand where I'm coming from here now? Nexus of Fate, all these cards that you can easily get back. Is it powerful? Do a lot of people play them? Of course, but... Far from anything I would ever recommend. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed this video or not. I guess it's rather controversial. Feel free to let me have it in the comment section. Anyway, you all have a wonderful day. Void here signing off. See you all next time.